Up next in this edition of OES News In Depth, we're going to take a look at how recent storms are impacting communities all around Northern California. We're also going to take a look at how state officials are coordinating with locals to manage those impacts, as well as what water managers are doing to prevent a major catastrophe. We'll have all that and more coming up next in this edition of OES News In Depth. Hello everyone, I'm Sean Boyd in the Cal OES Newsroom. Thanks for joining us for this edition of OES News In Depth. First up today, we're gonna take a look at really what it takes to manage a big weather event like what we're enduring right now. And that all happens down in the State Operations Center. And that's where John Goodell is. He's standing by in the SOC, or otherwise known as the SOC. John, tell us a little bit more about what the flurry of activity is and really what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, thanks, John. The State Operations Center has been activated the past few days in response to these winter storms pounding California. I was able to catch up with Director Mark Gillarducci to learn more about what's being done behind the scenes to coordinate these efforts. So this is the State Operations Center. This is sort of the, the, the hub of the coordination center, the heart, heartbeat, if you would, for all statewide uh, emergency management coordination in California. But this is supported by uh, regional centers that we have in different parts of the state that are also activated. It's supported by local emergency operations centers um, and local coordination centers that are, that are in our counties and in our cities. Um, across the state, there's a lot of uh, coordination and collaboration going on at different levels. All of that gets fed into this room behind me with all these different representatives that are here to be able to s sort of sift through all of that information and make sure that if, it if a situation cannot be mitigated at the lowest level and those, there's a need for resources or there's a need for an immediate response, uh, that does not get met at a local or regional level, then the folks here will ensure that, that those resources are, are provided. And so it, it really is these levels of response. Uh, this is the highest level. Um, and we also have our federal counterparts here, our partners at, uh, from FEMA and, and uh, other federal agencies that are here to be able to provide federal support as necessary. So this is really a critical center uh, that's taking into account the entire state, but it's being fed in uh, with information from various sources from throughout California. Now, what many people may not realize is this is a 24-7, 365-day operation. These people are trained for these exact type of scenarios, John. Yeah, for real. They are trained very well, in fact. But there is so much information coming in, so many things to manage and keep track of. How in the world do they keep track of it all in order to stay ahead of the game? Well, the unique part of this event was we had forecasts a week, days in advance. We knew this was going to be a significant storm. We were able to get ahead of it with public safety messaging. We had precautionary measures in place. We did our due diligence. And frankly, we were not surprised by anything that came about with the storm. Yeah, it's all about being prepared. Good information. Thanks a lot, John. Appreciate it down in the State Operations Center. All right, next up, we're going to go to the Department of Water Resources State Flood Operations Center, where Rob Mayberry is standing by to explain the difference between what we do and what they're doing right now, which is watching the gauges, watching those waters rise, and managing the flow. Rob. Thanks, Sean. I'm here at the State Flood Operations Center, where even after the last weekend storm, there continues to be a lot of activity. As additional storms continue to move through Northern California, lakes, rivers, and creeks continue to rise. In fact, this morning, the Department of Water Resources opened seven of the 48 gates to divert water from the Sacramento River onto the Yolo, Sacramento, and Sutter bypass. This is all a part of the state flood control project, which is designed to keep the city of Sacramento from flooding. Even though the most severe part of the storm has moved on, some Californians still may be at risk of flooding and or mudslides. This area is made up of, of a series of bypasses and levee systems, so when the water gets too much for the river system, we have these weirs strategically placed where the water can flow into the, the bypass. If you think of the bypass as a highway that can carry more, a higher volume of traffic and your, and your river systems as, as more of a, a roadway in your city, the, the water, we want most of that water getting into the bypasses. And 
circumventing the, the cities of Sacramento and West Sacramento and our other urban areas. And the house flooded again. This house has flooded several times, but I understand in its history. In the front, I can only go so high as far as Burmese. So I put the sandbags sand in the front that are level with the road. So at least we could um, be you know, prepared. If the water does come in, at least it'll stop there on the barrier. So we have three layers of sandbags, three hundred and fifty sandbags. So at least for the next few days, it will continue to be pretty busy here at the Flood Operations Center, making sure that all of us Californians are safe. Back to you, Sean. All right, Rob. Appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, we couldn't respond as an agency without the help from our mutual aid partners, uh, such as the California National Guard. In fact, we have Lieutenant Colonel Michael Martin, who is here with the California National Guard. Uh, Colonel, tell us a little bit about what the California National Guard does in an event like today with all this crazy weather. How are you guys able to help? Hi, Sean. Thanks for having me. Uh, the big, biggest thing I wanted to talk about is just how much assets we have. We, we're a community-based organization in which uh, we're in almost every uh, region that's been affected, and we're able to support that with our uh, numerous capabilities. We have uh, ground units, we have air units, and we have uh, detection, so we can support with that. But really, it's whatever, uh, whatever toolkit the, uh, the incident commander wants us to do. In fact, uh, working down there in the State Operations Center, I know uh, that some of your aerial assets as well as your high water uh, capability uh, vehicles have been deployed. Tell us a little bit about uh, those assets. So our, our high, high water vehicle, our, uh, our, our combat trucks that are able to go through uh, water and without sustaining damage and able to uh, lift whoever we're rescuing higher than the water level. Uh, so that's a, a, a fairly easy and supportable thing that we can do to support uh, the counties or the local responders uh, in, in a support role. And in fact, uh, we've got some great video that we want to take a look at of uh, this high water vehicle sort of in action uh, at a rescue. Tell us a little bit about the rescue. So this is us taking uh, a, uh, a response mission from the, uh, the Sheriff's Department. It's a Sheriff's Department helicopter. However, our high water vehicle was able to go in a location uh, to support the uh, extraction and uh, move them to safety. Yeah, that's that's fantastic video. I think that came from your Facebook page, and that's some video right there of uh, looking through the windshield, I believe. Yep. So we get missions, and we are able to uh, move to whatever location uh, the incident commander wishes us to uh, support. We're, we're at their direction, uh, but again, these are people that live in your community, uh, work in your community, and uh, w these are our neighborhoods that we're 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 protecting. And regardless of what the event is, whether it is a weather event or a major disaster. You guys are there to support. We are, always ready. Well, we appreciate your service. Thanks for your help, and uh, as a mutual aid partner, uh, you guys are wonderful. Thanks so much. Right. Thanks, Sean. Joining me now from the Cal OES State Operations Center is Cal Fire Spokesperson, Battalion Chief Scott McLean. Scott, you're down there where a lot of activity is going on. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what you guys have going on here at Cal OES to help with the flood uh, operation. Well, when incidents like this of this magnitude take place, we are here to help in whatever we can do to OES and to other agencies throughout the state. Uh, especially in this case with the floods, think about it, we have over 190 hand crews that we can facilitate, whether they be filling sandbags, whether they, whether they be laying those sandbags, debris removal, making sure those stream beds are cleaned out so we have a good water flow. And you've also got a lot of really great equipment that you can contribute mm -hmm. to the fight. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you have in terms of boats and mm -hmm. other kinds of equipment. We also have a lot of swift water rescue teams throughout the state, not just in the north. Uh, on the way home yesterday up in Butte County, I was listening to two actual rescues taking place, one on the north end of the county, one on the south, with a swift water swift water rescue team in that location. We have boats that facilitate their needs as well. They're uh, rubber boats. We can't have a lot of draft underneath those boats. They have to pretty much ride on top of the surface along with a small outboard uh, motor to be very maneuverable in those tight spaces, especially in the streams, the creeks and the rivers. And of course, Scotty, being communications professionals, you're helping out in our Joint Information mm -hmm. Center. Thanks for being there for us too. Thank you. It uh, gives us an opportunity to get that message out like, Turn around, don't drown. We are very heavily on social media and Facebook, as well as our CAL FIRE website. You can all find this on fire.ca.gov. But again, we want to promote that message. 
for an example, have a ready kit or a go kit for a better term. Have those supplies, three days worth of supplies. Have your cell phone, have a cell phone charger, whether it be for a car or a house, for an example. We often forget about the car, so that's a very good thing. Bring your laptop with you. Have a set of clothes. Have some water, have some food, for an example, on that as well. When we come to a body of water, we're trying to stress the fact that do not drive through that water. Six inches of water can knock somebody off their feet, believe it or not. A foot can actually float a car, a small car, with a heavy stream. Up to two feet will definitely take pretty much any car and uh, continue to slide it downstream. So turn around, don't drown. Great advice. Cal Fire spokesperson Scott McLean. Appreciate you being here. Thanks. Thank you. Well, that about does it for this edition of OES News In-Depth. We hope you found it interesting and insightful as well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and you can check out our videos on our YouTube page. And we're always on at oesnews.com. We are also welcoming your feedback anytime, day or night. Be sure to just fill out the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have an idea for a story or if there's more uh, things that you want to know about, let us know that too. For all of us here at Cal OES, I'm Sean Boyd. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.